Who among DC Comics' long list of do-gooders, ne'er-do-wells, and everyone in between most deserve their own shot at cinematic greatness? That's what we're here to answer. Keep watching to find out which DC characters deserve their own movie. Life in Gotham City is tough for everyone. Sure, you'll get to see the bad signals splashed across the clouds every once in a while, but is that worth the headache of the Batmobile tying up downtown traffic? Now imagine being a Gotham City Police Department detective. That's the plight of Renee Montoya. Created for Batman the Animated Series, she came into her own within the pages of the Gotham Central story arc Half a Life, in which she's outed as a lesbian. Her life is never smooth, from her romantic entanglements to her disillusionment with the system she works within. One of her most notable exploits is assuming the mantle of the question, a faceless hero who does the work that an officer of the law cannot. Her deep-seated devotion to making the world a better place always endures, in spite of brutal memories, regrets, and too many bottles of liquor. She's exactly the sort of complex character that DC movies deserve. The Martian Manhunter is a bit of a collage as far as superheroes go. Sometimes his backstory indicates that he comes from a populous Mars full of sentient life, while other versions cast him as the last of his race. His name implies a ferocity that doesn't define him. Though he's had multiple solo titles to his name, he's probably best known as a member of the Justice League. He's also an obsessive fan of a certain brand of chocolate sandwich cookie. This is all to say that he contains multitudes, and that's exactly why he deserves his own movie. Just picture it. Alone on a strange planet, Martian Manhunter attempts to blend in with the local populace, but with subpar results. 2019 Shazam demonstrated just how much fun DC movies can be while telling a fish-out-of-water story, so why not take it to an interplanetary scale? While Billy Batson was a kid confronted with adult responsibilities, Manhunter is a poised adult, marooned in a world that he doesn't understand, but still wants to save. He's a calm, meditative presence, sure, but he also doesn't realize how hilarious he looks in a gaudy Christmas sweater. I wasn't sure about the size. I can grow into it. He's a hero who's as inspiring as he is endearing, with shape-shifting powers that could launch a film into the stratosphere of visual heights. What's not to love? The early 2000s Teen Titans cartoon had a lot going for it, and one of its greatest assets was the surly, serious, secretly sympathetic Raven. Voiced to gravelly perfection by Tara Strong, Raven was the sarcastic heart of the show. It's this contrast that makes her so beloved in all of her incarnations. Though she keeps to herself and can be quick with a barb, she loves with a passion so fierce it can overturn the apocalypse. A movie starring Raven would have a multitude of story possibilities. It could be set in high school with the character's dark origin serving as a potent metaphor for adolescence. Another option would be to go in a horror direction by drawing upon the eldritch nature of Raven's heritage. Still more choices could include a fantasy tale set in her home realm of Azeroth, or a team story set in Titan's Tower. What makes all these possibilities so potent is the presence of a young woman aching to do some good in the world despite daunting challenges. As long as that element is there, everything else will fall into place. Azeroth Metrion Xenthos! Everyone loves magic tricks. Sure, some of us like to call out the moment that the illusion falls apart. And when we grow up, we're not so easily fooled anymore. But there's a reason that sleight-of-hand tricks remain eternally popular. There's just something undeniably exciting about seeing the laws of reality seemingly being broken. Zatanna Zatara channels that thrill in high style while also adding some literal magic. Rather than receding into the shadows of a secret identity, she embraces her powers by becoming an internationally renowned illusionist who chases down the bad guys when she's not taking curtain calls. This charisma makes her a charming character no matter what the setting or creative team. She's got all the swagger of a showman, plus the do-gooding heart of a hero. Additionally, the sheer scope of her abilities allows for enormous flights of visual and storytelling fancy. Her powers might occasionally take the wind out of her, but they would also make for some smashing cinema. Ta -da! Most superheroes are notable for their daring deeds, heroic creeds, or striking aesthetics. And then there's Booster Gold. It's not like Booster hasn't saved the world, or continuously strived to do the right thing, or worked with other heroes in thrilling tributes to the power of teamwork. The trouble is, though, he messes up a lot. Also, he originally became a superhero to build a corporate empire. And furthermore, his powers mostly come from things that he stole. 
Booster was once a denizen of Gotham City during the 25th century. Laid low by his gambling addict father's schemes, he ended up stealing superheroic tech from the Metropolis Space Museum, getting a robotic security guard named Skeets on his side, and jumping into the past to make a name for himself. This was all entirely off the wonder and magic of other, better heroes, and it mostly blew up in Booster's face. When the public wasn't mangling his name into Buster, he was going bankrupt. And yet he persevered. He's been a repo man with his superheroic bestie Blue Beetle, and he's also saved the world alongside the Justice League. While he's made his share of mistakes, he's always moved forward. Ultimately, he's perfectly suited to lead one of the most moving superhero films ever. His origin in grifting defines him, not in terms of its success, but in how far he's moved beyond it. Oh, hey, guys! I was just totally meditating there about stopping crime and stuff. Batman and Robin might be a legendary dynamic duo, but the person in the green pixie boots hasn't always been the same boy wonder. There was Dick Grayson, the original sidekick, who's now known as Nightwing. Then there was Jason Todd, who was infamously killed off by a phone and vote. Next came Tim Drake, whiz kid child of the 90s. Even a few young women have been Robin, but only one Robin has ever been Bruce Wayne's actual son, the irascible, irresistible Damian Wayne. The product of Bruce's romance with the deadly Talia al Ghul, Damien was trained by the League of Assassins in every way to kill a man. Unfortunately, he didn't also receive any instruction in basic human empathy, so he arrived at Wayne Manor a self-important, prickly wonderkind, with a chip on his shoulder the size of the Batmobile. And yet, despite all his arrogance, he proves to be a young man longing for his father, though he would rather die than admit it. After years of kindness, hard work, and getting used to his dad's no-kill policy, Damien has emerged as one of DC's most compelling heroes, thus making him a prime candidate to lead his own movie. And after all, who wouldn't want to see Batman in a parent-teacher conference on the big screen? Speedy is perhaps best known for his struggles with drug addiction, which have become a bit of a joke among many DC fans. He was immortalized on the cover of 1971's Green Lantern Green Arrow No. 85, in which he's caught using heroin while Green Arrow exclaims in absolute horror, My ward is a junkie! That cover launched a storyline that follows the character to this day. Speedy, who went on to rechristen himself Arsenal and Red Arrow, continues to struggle with demons. And when you factor in Leon, his daughter of the villainous Cheshire, his complications only get more complicated. But despite all of this, he keeps on persisting. Has he fallen off the wagon? Yes. Has he always made the best choices? No. But he nevertheless refuses to stop believing in his own ability to change for the better. That's the kind of superheroic moral big enough for the silver screen. With a name like Deathstroke the Terminator, you can tell he won't be a subtle character. So the writers changed his name to simply Deathstroke. See? Much more subtle. With his long history of cruelty, betrayal, manipulation, and of course, termination, he's definitely lived up to his over-the-top moniker. Despite all of that, some of the best creators in comics have still managed to make him a fascinating symbol of hardcore comics excess. Perhaps his most widely known incarnation is the animated version, as Ron Perlman's silky portrayal of him in the 2003 Teen Titans cartoon is unforgettably chilling. Hurry, young Titans. Your time is running out. The comics have followed suit, with works like Christopher Priest's Deathstroke series exploring the man in the mask as a soldier who can't quit the fight, despite the way it ensnares his family and friends. Though he never quite earns redemption, he does find a place as the man who does what others won't, while undeniably doing it in style. He brings the violence aplenty, but he accompanies it with pathos and an exploration of what violence does to a man's life. Would he become a good guy by the end of a movie about him? Probably not. But he could confront the audience with a vision of the superhero game's eternal enemies, and that would make for a unique film indeed. But just make sure you don't confuse him with a similarly named Marvel character. I I'm not Deadpool. I thought Deadpool was a good guy. Why does everybody think I'm Deadpool? You got them guns! And the swords. Yeah, well, lots of people have guns and swords, okay? Superhero movies are going cosmic, thanks to the likes of The Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain Marvel, and Shazam. Those films, much like the comics they're based on, are weird, wild, and wide in scope. DC has an incredible history of telling these kinds of stories, which is abundantly clear in the case of Big Barter. 
She comes from Apocalypse, an industrial hellscape ruled by fear, degradation, and violence. Raised to be one of the female Furies, a terrifyingly vicious pack of warrior women who do the bidding of Apocalypse ruler Darkseid, she finds salvation in the form of Scott Free, who will become the heroic Mr. Miracle. It is alongside Scott that Barter finds strength and freedom, finally allowing her to escape Apocalypse and find a life worth living on Earth. Her tale is a classic one, in which a hero discovers that she's far stronger than she'd realize and how much she can change her own life. Plus, she's a heavy hitter for the ages and wears unquestionably one of the coolest costumes of all time. She's a hero who never thought she'd be one. She's not just a potential big screen star, she's already ready for her close-up. Once upon a time, an alien baby crash landed in the rural United States. Adopted by kindly humans as a beloved son, he was perfectly normal in appearance. Yet he possessed incredible powers like flight, invulnerability, and super strength. He would go on to protect the world with these fabulous gifts as he sought to make society a better, safer, and more just place. Of course, we're talking about the one and only Icon. While Superman ended up in Kansas, Icon crashed in the fields of the Antebellum South, where an enslaved woman named Miriam took him in. For decades, he bided his time, using his powers to perform small acts of good, waiting for Earth's technology to catch up with that of his alien home, but he couldn't lie low forever. After the teenage Raquel Irvin witnessed his powers, she persuaded him to become a superhero and make her his sidekick, as she became the irrepressible Rocket. Together, they worked to make the world a better place. Icon isn't just a hero. He's a testament to the power of kindness toward all, grace under pressure, and the bonds of service that can unite generations. He's not just a hero anyone can love. He's someone the movie-going public needs. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite superheroes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.